Yes, Virginia. There is a Santa Claus. Tonight. He exists as... Go for a Merry Christmas, you guys. Hey. Merry All right. Oh, terrific. Well, as you know, Christmas is a time for family and friends, and tonight we've gathered all of our family and friends here at Live at Five for a very special Christmas Eve edition of our program. And you're more than welcome to stick around for the full hour. We're going to have a lot of fun. Andrea Mackay is getting a little heavy on this side. <laughs> How do you do this, Bill? <laughs> like Dad, she's eating well, I'm sure. That a girl, Andrea. There we go. <laughs> Some terrific stuff on the program tonight. Uh, we've got Mike Duffy live from Christmas, with a, or live from Ottawa, I should say, with a very special Christmas Eve wish uh, list. And we've got the plays of the week. We've got greetings from our bureaus all around the Maritimes. Oh, we've got an investigative report oh, from Heather important. Proudfoot mm -hmm. on the meaning of Christmas. And we are told that Heather Proudfoot's sources for this story are impeccable. I can't wait. Well, also, ATV's Bill Jessam, the master ghost storyteller, has a very special Christmas Eve tale to tell. Stay tuned for that one. We're going to have a lot of fun, so I hope you'll stick around. Right now, let's check with Steve Murphy, who's working on the ATV Evening News at 6. Steve? Thank you, Paul. Merry Christmas, everybody. There are new revelations tonight as police continue their search for missing 14-year-old Marcia LeBlanc. A bloodhound expert says the missing teen was never in a truck belonging to a suspect, Roger LeBlanc. Now, for weeks, police have suspected the missing hunter had something to do with the abduction and the murder of another teen. But does this new theory cast a shadow on that theory? The story tonight at 6 o'clock. Also here tonight, you know, for some shoppers in the Halifax area, shopping may never be the same again. The Met store on Goddard is closing its doors after around four decades of service. The once thriving store has become a victim of hard times in the downtown business area. It's the end of an era. The story at 6 o'clock tonight. And for some retailers, the Christmas season was make it or break it time. As far as surviving is concerned, the early indications are it was a good holiday season for store owners. Question is, was it good enough to survive? We take a look at ringing up retail tonight on the ATV Evening News at 6 o'clock. Right now, over to meteorologist Richard Zorowski in the ATV Weather Center with a storm on one radar system and something else uh, a little mysterious on another one, Richard. Absolutely, Steve. Right now we're tracking three disturbances, one coming in from the Great Lakes, the other one down from the south, and we have a strange disturbance moving in from the northern areas of Labrador. Now, we haven't quite got it sorted out, but we're working on it. We'll tell you all about it coming up a little bit later on Live at Five, Steve. Mm, very, very interesting stuff there. Uh, Obviously a southward object. Well, we'll check with Richard again in a few minutes and again with a complete weather forecast for your Christmas weekend at 5.30. And then at 6 o'clock, it's a Christmas away from home. Tonight, we attend a service at the Missions to Seamen for foreign sailors here in the Maritimes for Christmas. We'll find out what they do to celebrate Christmas so far from home. All of these stories are coming up tonight on the Christmas Eve edition of the ATV Evening News at 6 o'clock, right after the Live at Five family Christmas, which continues now with Paul Menye and Nancy Reagan and a cast of hundreds, it appears. <laughs> all our closest friends. Thanks, We've Steve. We've got them all here. We're having quite a party, folks, and we're going to get back to our party in a moment. But first at 5 tonight, when you want answers, you go to the experts. And that's what we decided to do in our attempts to pin down the real story behind this Santa Claus character. Everybody makes such a fuss about it this time of year. We sent our intrepid reporter, Heather Proudfoot, out to delve into just who he is and how he manages to do the things he does at this time of year. She found the real experts out at Rockingstone Heights Elementary School. Christmas concerts and lots of fun. But why all the fuss at this time of year about this fellow they call Santa Claus? Inquiring minds want to know. So we decided to ask the people who really know about these things. Seven-year-old Lee Mountain knows his stuff. He provided us today with vital confirmation needed before proceeding further with this investigation. 
Yep. Huh? I believe in very much. much. Still others in this think tank of six and seven-year-old experts very have compiled good. a dossier of facts and figures about the big guy in red. Get your photo. He's fat. He's got a magic snowball. And he, and he lo looks at it. And if he sees a girl that be, he sees people be mad and good. Oh, so is he watching us now? Do you? Yeah. Yes. Undaunted by that subtle pressure to discontinue our investigation, we continued pressing for answers. And what's his job? Bringing toys all over the world. Now, does he have any help up there? Yeah. Who helps him with things? The elves. <laughs> they um, pound and paint and glue. Are they as big as Santa? No. Nah. Are they little people? Yeah. No, we're right here. <laughs> I, bet you, I bet you there's some Christmas elves that look just like you. <laughs> no. <laughs> there is new information now, too, that Santa's elves are numerous, perhaps numbering in the hundreds. A lot of elves. <laughs> this group provided as well names of the animals, reindeer, who are also part of this conspiracy to bring gifts to children everywhere. Rudolph the Wind Nose Reindeer, yeah. and Cupid, Dahmer's, and anything. And how does he get there? He uses his reindeer too. Wow. And, and, and then they fly all the way to people's house. Two of the experts also confirmed the existence of another player in this Christmas caper. Santa Claus is apparently married. Amber here is the only one of this group designated to comment on Mrs. Claus. And who else is up there to help him? Miss Claus. Miss Claus. Let me talk, please. And what's her job? What kinds of things does she do to help Santa? Um, cheer him up. And according to these experts, Santa Claus leaves children's houses the same way he came, by way of the chimney. Yeah. Just a name reaches at the nose and they disappear. Oh. But what of the nature of Santa Claus? What makes him tick? And what does he represent? We are satisfied with the information we received. We close our investigation now with the experts' assessment of what Santa Claus and Christmas is all about. It's time to love and all that and cheer. In Halifax, Heather Proudfoot, ATV News. Well, leave it to our intrepid reporter, Heather Proudfoot, mm -hmm. to get to the bottom of that story. I don't know about you, but I certainly learned a lot. I learned a great deal. I'm sure everybody did here, too. And, you know, while we were watching that story, uh, Graham Denman, who's uh, co-hosted this Christmas Eve special with me on a couple of occasions, and said he had something to say. And I came about five years ago, Graham's been here. He's become an expert at this TV business. What do you got for us, Graham? But wait, you guys. We have some breaking news from Richard Jarowski. Richard. Uh, thanks a lot, Graham, and indeed we do. If we go to our Santa radar, this is what we, we picked up, and it looks as though we are now picking up Santa Claus as he's moving through the North Pole. He's just passed Greenland, Paul and Nancy, and is now moving off to Baffin Island. And now at, what is it now, about 10 after 5 Atlantic time, he's moved through the southern areas of Baffin Island. He's encountering a little bit of turbulence here, and we're going to keep you posted as to what's going on. A little bit of uh, disturbance up there with Santa Claus, Nancy. Thank you, Richard. I've got some, some friends here who want to send out Christmas greetings to some people in the Maritimes. What's your name? Hi, my name is Ashley, and I'd like to say hi to Matthew and Aaron Hillier. All right. What about you? I recognize this young lady. Hi, my name is Caitlin, and I'd like to say hi to my stepsister, Jane, and my sick brother at home, Barrett mm -hmm. Barrett Mackay. Barrett has some and asthma problems today, yes. doesn't he? I hope he's feeling better. And my friend, better. Tracy. All right. Hi, Tracy. What about you? That's a menu if I ever saw one. Hi, I'm Brett, and I'd like to say hi to my nanny and granddad, Matthewson, mom, and nanny and granddad, Menye. Merry oh. Christmas. All right. What about your brother? Quickly. Hi, my name is Ben, and I, I, like, I would like to say Merry Christmas to my mom and my nanny and granddad and the rest of my family. All right. Thanks, Ben Menier. Thanks, guys. Over to Paul's team over there. Paul. Oh, hey. All right. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> I got some other people who want to say hello. What's your name? 
Sade. And who and who you got there, Sade? Trev. Uh, and who would you like to say Merry Christmas to? Um, my grandmother and my aunt and my aunt Bevy and my uncle Bertie. All right. Did you hear that out there? Merry Christmas. And who you got here? Andrea. And who do you want to say hello to, Andrea? Um, to my nanny and grandmother. All right. And how about you? Lisa. And who do you want to say hello to, Lisa? My nanny and grandmother. All right. And I recognize this young fellow with the bow tie. This is the son of one of our ace cameramen, Stuart McDougall. Who are you going to say hello to? Nanny and Papa and say mines. All right. Well, terrific. we got a lot of other people we want you to meet here on our Christmas Eve edition of Live at Five. And of course, we have greetings from the News Center, but every year we uh, like to extend greetings from our news bureaus right around the Maritimes. Right now, we want to take you to ATV News, Fredericton. Gee, I'm bored. There's no news to cover. I know what we can do. Let's go to the mall. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> There's one. Father, uh, do you have any uh, smaller video cameras? Well, we got a few of them. Um, smaller than that? Yeah, yeah a few. Yeah, a bit smaller than this, if you could, yeah. Yeah, we got a couple. There's a uh, Sony and a... <laughs> now, we've been very good this year, Santa. What are we going to get? What are you going to get, Katie? Yeah. My gracious. All right, the good folks at our Fredericton Bureau. We're going to have more bu uh, Bureau greetings a little bit later in the program tonight. Mm -hmm, but right now, we're going to take a break. But before we go to commercial, we want to show you some more greetings from Maritimers serving overseas. Hi, my name's Leading Seaman Mike McKinley. I'm on uh, HMCS Iroquois in the Adriatic. Just a Merry Christmas to my mom and dad, Keith and Barb. Both the families, Blet, John, and uh, Chantel. Of course, my beautiful wife, Tammy. Merry Christmas, mate. Love you. Hi, my name is Master Corporal Rob Porter. I'm on the Iroquois in the Adriatic. I'd like to say hi to my beautiful wife, Kathy, my two little kids, Devin and Brandon. And I wish I was home for Christmas. See you later. Hi, I'm Corporal Rogers. I'm the uh, HMC is here, Iroquois in the Adriatic. I'd like to say Merry Christmas to my beautiful wife, and daughter, and I'll be home soon. with some expert accompaniment from our old friend, Kurt Hahn, who's been a regular on our Christmas Eve show on Live at Five. Thanks for coming in, Kurt. Thank you, Paul. We couldn't do it without you. We almost expect to have you hanging around under the Christmas tree on Christmas morning. Thank you. Yeah. It's great to be here. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's right now, uh, we're going to go to Nancy in a moment, but we want to bring you some more greetings from another bureau. Here's ATV Moncton. Jingle bells, yes, all right. Wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas to everyone, and especially Alex Bass from ATV Mountain. Isn't that great? And everybody here in ATV Halifax Bureau wishes Alex Bass a speedy recovery as well. He had an accident, and he is a valued employee. We want him back soon. I'm going to introduce you to people here in the control room, which is where they say the real work happens. This is Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Hi. Tell us quickly what you're doing. I'm uh, moving the teleprompter. Yeah, so out of cue is what you see the anchor reading. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Carrie. This is Natalie. She's a production Hi. assistant. You've got 45 seconds. Okay, we better get through here. This is Wade. He's the director. He's a really bossy one, director. aren't you, Wade? Yeah. How's the show going, Wade? Oh, it's great. Oh, Love good. You're engaged to be married, aren't you, Wade? I, if I don't get home for Christmas, I won't be. Oh, look that way, Wade. The camera's that way. You're the director, remember? This is Dale. Hi, Dale. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Dale's the switcher. He's a wonderful guy. Oh, thank you. Anybody want to say hi to? Merry Christmas to all my family and friends. This is Greg back here. He's, <clears throat> he's very important, aren't you, Greg? Oh, just 
<laughs> and he gets nervous on camera too. Okay, well, it's Wade's over here. He's telling me to throw to Richard. Anything you want to tell anyone else? Uh, just Merry Christmas Seven. and everyone drive safely. Six. Don't drink and drive. Five. Here, here. Let's go to Richard. He's checking up Take on that one. very strange Two. disturbance on the radar. Richard. Take one. Thanks a lot, Nancy. And yes, it is a strange disturbance. However, we have identified it looks like Santa Claus has just rounded the northern areas of uh, Canada in from Greenland right through the southern areas of Baffin Island and is now having to divert. Now, he was headed down towards the maritime regions, but he's now just south of Southampton Island in the northern areas of Hudson Bay. So it looks like he's got a little bit of turbulence, a little bit of a problem here, but we've, we've been able to relay the forecast to him, Paul. So it looks like you'll be able to skirt around it as he moves into the maritime region. So he's still got a little bit of traveling to do. All right. Good work there, Richard. Keep us informed of that. We want to bring you some more family and friends from our ATV News Center here, starting over right here with this guy who looks like one of Santa's elves, Kevin Nickel, one of our camera guys. Who you got there, Kev? This is Alexander. Alexander Miles William. All right. He's three and a half months old. An early baseball fan, I see, as well. Very early. Here's another one of our camera guys, Keith Johns, with another new delivery. This is Jarrett Alexander Johns, and he'd like to say hi to Grandma and Grandpa Campbell in Cape Breton. All right. And Johns in Sackville. Of course. We can't forget the good people out in Sackville. And here is a lovely singer who we hope will sing at the end of the show with us, mm -hmm. Kathy Campbell, and her husband, J.W., in behind. Who you got there, Kathy? This is my daughter, Olivia, our daughter, and her son, John William. John William, anything to say? <laughs> no comment from John William uh, being a little tight-lipped today on the Christmas Eve show. We hope that we can get something out of from him a little bit later. We're going to take a break. Still to come, uh, Yvonne Colbert, one of uh, our fine reporters on your side. Tonight, looking at people who are on your side year-round, even on Christmas Day. And we're also going to hear from Jonathan Kay in a moment. So Yvonne Colbert, Jonathan Kay coming up. Don't go away. It's the Merry Christmas edition of Live at Five. All right, everybody. Yes. Sounds pretty good, doesn't Sounds he? terrific. You recognize that guy as Jonathan Kay, one of our uh, Live at Five reporters, who is at this hour playing the organ at a church in Halifax. We are going to go back to see multi-talented Jonathan Kay and his congregation in just a moment. But uh, first, the Christmas Eve edition of our Live at Five milestones, which we want to send out to some wonderful Maritimers tonight. Uh, first of all, Frida and Vincent Burgess of New Minas, Nova Scotia. They are celebrating 50 Christmases together after tying the knot on Christmas Eve back in 1943. Isn't that great? They have four children, 13 grandchildren and four great-grandchildren who are hosting an open house for them a week from Sunday at the New Minas Civic Center. Then there's these people, Fred and Annie Sloan White of Terrence Bay, Nova Scotia. They're celebrating their 65th anniversary today. It'll be a big Christmas and anniversary celebration with family and friends. Congratulations from five children, 17 grandchildren, and 23 great-grandkids. And tomorrow, Christmas Day, it's a doubly special occasion for Edward and Lillian Gowdy of South Ohio, Yarmouth County. It's their golden anniversary and wishing them many, many more. Three children, five grandchildren, one great-grandson, and also Belinda, Angie, and Charmaine. Oh, we got one little anniversary. We've got to sneak one in here right away. John and Rita Soul are celebrating their 57th anniversary on the 28th of December. Happy anniversary, Mom and Dad. Oh, that's And terrific. Merry Christmas, of course. Yeah, well, it's time to go to church, folks. Mm -hmm. We're going to the Cathedral Church of All Saints in Halifax, where our Jonathan Kay is playing the organ and leading the congregation.
That's from the Christmas candle lighting service at Cathedral Church of All Saints in Halifax. As they celebrate, so do we here on Live at Five tonight. Just a little later, we'll have this Christmas Eve story. On this Christmas Eve, the spirits are many, and some are cloaked in different disguises. There are the spirits of stinginess, of humbug, of the no Christmas gift spirits. I'm Bill Jessen. Be careful which spirits you allow into your heart this Christmas Eve. I'll have more later in this hour. Hi, I'm Sergeant Ron Seabrook. I fly with 415 Squadron out of Greenwood, Nova Scotia. I'm presently in Siganella, Italy, flying in support of Operation Sharp Guard for the UN resolutions against the former Yugoslavia. I'd like to take this opportunity to wish Merry Christmas to my family in Middleton, Nova Scotia. I'll be seeing you soon. Hi, I'm Private Brian George, a 14 wing in Greenwood, Nova Scotia. I'm here in Siganella on the island of Sicily. We're here in support of the UN in the Adriatic Sea. I'd like to wish my girlfriend Renee in Ellsford, Nova Scotia, a very Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Rain. Hi, my name is Alain Chalifou. I'm from uh, Greenwood, Nova Scotia, 14 wing. We're here with the Operation uh, Sharp Guard in uh, Sicily. I'd like to wish everybody in the back in Nova Scotia and my daughter, Gabrielle, uh, Merry Christmas. Joyeux you know, Noël, tout le monde. Merci. Santa. Thank you very much, Hi. Santa Claus. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, sweetie. How's uh, Santa look-alike delivering the mail this morning? We uh, caught up to him making his rounds and spreading a little bit of Christmas cheer. And there's a lot of Christmas cheer here at the ATV News Center as we uh, have a special Christmas Eve edition of Live at Five underway. We've even lost our floor director to the Christmas caroling, so we'll let them go on. I might even join it myself. We'll throw it over to Richard Zarowski at the Weather Center right now. Richard? Thanks a lot, Paul. And helping me with the weather is Graham Denton. Now, Graham has been helping me do the weather for the last five years on Christmas Eve here on Live at Five. And of course, this is Bill Denman's son. And Bill works in Master Control, was doing audio a little while ago, but tonight he's working in Master Control. And then Graham's going to help me here with the weather. First of all, why don't we talk about this dot up over my head here. This is the Santa radar. That's what we had a little while ago, showing you where Santa Claus was. Now, we can expect to see, you can see up here, We've got Santa Claus moving through the northern areas of the map, and his expected trajectory is to move in through the southern areas of the maritime region sometime in the wee hours of the morning, do the chimney stuff. And you can see he's just pushing down in through the southern areas of Hudson Bay and James Bay, but he is encountering some turbulence, which isn't the great news at all. Right now, our latest satellite picture shows the disturbance moving through from the Great Lakes, another one down to the south. And as those two converge, we do have a weather advisory. It's a storm advisory for the maritime region. So we can expect to see snow. Nova Scotia, particularly the eastern sections of Nova Scotia, the highlands of Cape Breton, can expect to see something around 10 or 15 centimeters of snow by tomorrow evening. The snow will be starting because of these two low pressure disturbances in the wee hours of the morning. Close up view shows the cloud already encroaching in through New Brunswick. Temperatures stack up like this. Today's highs, minus 13 to minus 6 degrees. A very cold day out there. Feel like temperatures were around minus 30 degrees to the north, hovering around minus 20 degrees to the south because of that northerly flow. For tonight, snuggle alert in effect. In through New Brunswick, very cold there. Minus 14, so put on your long uh, cap, I think it's called, when you snuggle down. We can expect to see temperatures minus 18 to minus 14 degrees. Snow moving in through all areas of the Maritimes by tomorrow. You can get to try out your new Christmas skis. What are you expecting to get for Christmas? All sorts of stuff, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. We can also, by tomorrow, count on a snowy day. So if you're out and about in through the Maritime regions, this low pressure disturbance is our weather maker and will continue to move through. The northerly flow will give us cool temperatures. This is the way they'll stack up. You expect to see that low pretty much just to the east of the maritime regions. A couple of cold fronts drifting down to the south. By tomorrow, no real great weather any place on the road. So if you're where you're supposed to be, stay there because we're looking at 10 to 15 centimeters of snow in Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, the highlands of Cape Breton, also the southern areas of New Brunswick. Daytime highs minus 6 right through about minus 3 degrees in New Brunswick. Out to the east, minus 2 to minus 3, mainland of Nova Scotia. Minus two to minus three degrees. Chance of getting some frozen, freezing precipitation as well. As far as our probabilities of sunshine go, this is what we can expect to see tomorrow. Only about 10% with all that snow coming in. For Sunday, 60%. I have to duck for that one. And then for Monday and Tuesday, 100% probability of sunshine. Thank you very much for helping me with the weather, Graham. Now back to Paul and Nancy. 
Thank you, Richard. And hey, Graham, good job. Richard, your job could be in jeopardy. As we all know, most of Bill Jessam's stories are about the mysterious. Well, Bill's latest investigation of these Yuletime spirits leads one to believe that they abound. There are the ghosts of Christmas's past and other spirits, some of goodwill toward all. However, the ones from the dark side are not so friendly. The question is, how does one recognize and embrace the true spirit of Christmas? Perhaps the answer is in the heart. "'Twas a night before Christmas when all over the Maritimes not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. But wait, wait. There is something strange about this night. Something is stirring outside. Something unexplained is happening to the people of the Maritimes. It's as if something they cannot control is taking over their minds and bodies. Something inside me, I don't know what it is. Weird. I think it happened before, but I don't remember. I wish somebody would tell me what's happening. On Christmas Eve, spirits like winged phantoms fill human hearts with dread as they sweep over villages and towns, seeking cold and uncaring souls to invade. You may think otherwise, but look up. They are there, but always unseen. Don't you know what's happening? Don't fight it. Let it happen. It's something very special. We have discovered on this night, however, the spirits do not come as avenging angels. We are enlightened by the children. Don't you know it's the spirit of Christmas? It's the spirit of joy and care. It's the spirit of love and peace. May the spirit of Christmas always be with you. Bill Jessam, ATV News. And a Merry Christmas to Bill Jessam as well tonight. And right now we want to bring in uh, Mike Duffy live via satellite from Ottawa. Another great guy who's uh, made an effort to join us for Christmas Eve. And we're awfully glad to have you with us, Mike. Paul, it's great to be with you and to be a part of this big party and to hear those wonderful sentiments from my old pal Bill Jessam, of course, who always hits the nail right on the head with the mood of the moment. Indeed he does. Now, you've got some sentiments for us tonight. I know you've been kind of working on a Christmas wish list and I, there are a couple of people who spring to mind that I thought you might have something in the stocking for like you like the Mulrooney glasses Paul. <laughs> yeah I was I, I you know what happens when you wear these glasses I get an extra chin <laughs> my voice drops way down like this and everything that comes out of my mouth is BS oh, oh I thought you needed a beard oh, there oh. <laughs> how about John Savage of Nova Scotia now he's had a rough go of it he was in the hospital for a while and and now I guess he's out and ready for Christmas. But I wonder if there's anything you could augment his Christmas with. Well, Mike Duffy's uh, Christmas list for Santa, a recommendation for Premier John Savage, would be a federal cabinet post. Not for Dr. John, but for Dartmouth MP Ron McDonald. And if he doesn't give Ron McDonald a cabinet post, I think Santa Claus should give John Savage a bulletproof vest to fend off all of those attacks that are coming at him from his critics in the Nova Scotia Liberal Party, critics who'd like to see Ron McDonald as the new Liberal leader. Ooh. Ooh, yes. <laughs> well, Santa's got a lot of work to do with those oh Liberals. My, my goodness. Well, I, I, a guy you know very well who was running around the newsroom today, he's always busy working the phones, a good hard-nosed news reporter, one of the best, I think, in the country, Rick Grant. He was looking for something to do around here today, and I, I gave him a little gift. What do you got for him? Well, I think Rick Grant deserves an extra phone line and perhaps stereo cell phones <laughs> to handle all the calls he's getting from those angry liberals who want to dump John Savage. And I've got something here for Mary Clancy, I think, Paul, a whole new wardrobe for Mary. She's lost so much weight, you wouldn't recognize her. But she could also use a set of hockey pads, Paul. Not that Mary Clancy's taking up hockey, but she's got to get some pads for the elbows as she fights off Ron McDonald in that battle to get into Jean Chrétien's cabinet. The only one, of course, who's in the godfather chair there is uh, the balding barrister from Glace Bay, Dave Dingwall. He's oh. sitting on top of the mountain, and he doesn't have to worry. Oh, Santa has a lot of work to do there, Mike. Uh, exactly. How about Frank McKenna, popular guy? Can he get any more popular, and what can you give him this Christmas? I don't know. I think Santa Claus should just give him more good luck because everything Frank McKenna touches seems to turn to gold. He was the first into welfare reform. Everybody else is following his lead. I guess good health because... Everybody around here thinks that when the time comes for Jean Chrétien to move on, and who knows how many years that'll be, Frank McKenna will be right there ready to take his place. He's a, he's a winner waiting in the wings. And of course, I can't leave this Christmas list without little Paul McEwen, 
down at Province House in Nova Scotia. He's a former Prince Edward Islander and moved to the Big Island, Cape Breton, and he's having trouble with all those nasty reporters. And Santa, I think you should give Paul a big stick and he should put some of those reporters in jail for not showing him the respect that a speaker deserves. Well, Mike, speaking of Prince Edward Islanders, you are one. I know your wife is working this Christmas in Ottawa and you can't make it down east. You know, we'd love to have had you at our party tonight. Anybody here in the Maritimes? I know, I know who it is that you want to well, say hello. Well, the whole gang, but I got to say hi to Mom. Yeah. And to all the in-laws and the outlaws and the whole gang. I'm just uh, leaving here now. How do you like the tree, Johnny? Can we it's get beautiful. a wide shot of the tree? I trimmed it myself, <laughs> every single strand. And if you believe that, you'll believe anything. But anyway, I'm on the way home. All right. Got to help Gavin put up the tree. He's six foot two. <laughs> Takes after his pater maternal father-in-law or grandfather. Yeah. Great big kid. So he's at home. You'll get us. And we'll have a great time yeah. with the bride and uh, whatever. And everybody. Merry Christmas, Mike, from all of us Christmas here at ATV. Fall. You have a terrific one. And Merry Christmas again to your you mom and PEI. Have a good one, all Mike. Bye-bye. Take care. Time now for another Christmas greeting from uh, one of our ATV news bureaus. Uh, we're going to let the good people in our Sydney office take us to a break with a little help from Matt Minglewood. Come listen to my story about a man named Nick. Wanted to see you at my ATV tech. So one day Santa decided it was time to visit ATV and do a Christmas ride. The TV business is a very big affair. Some folks sell just about anywhere. The king folk are glad when they get a big account. It's ads on the air and it really counts. Everybody sees us, our signal's always out. There's a bunch of engineers, you never see them pout. They keep us on the air and your picture bright and clean. They are the people behind the scene. Making TV commercials is really quite a task. How much work, you might rightly ask. If you have to write the ad, and then you have to shoot. By the time it's all done, it can cost a bit of loot. There are a lot of people making TV work. It's everybody's job to help the station work. When we sign on or say goodnight, there's always someone there to make things look right. Now the new business has what you need to know. It's our job to make the information flow. Even in New Glasgow, the team is on the beat. It's hard work that makes live at five. You meet our visit to Cape Breton is now complete. The management and staff are the kind you'd like to meet. Come back next year and see these folks again at ATV in Cape Breton. An ATV Christmas ride. It's a happy time. Merry Christmas, everyone. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be and Dave Hiltz got a great Christmas present today. They got to take their son, Evan, home. Evan and his twin sister, Andrea, were born a few months ago, premature, on September 21st. There were some health concerns for Evan. In fact, both babies only weighed about two pounds at birth, but the whole family will be home for Christmas. And everybody here at ATV wants to say congratulations and Merry Christmas to the Hiltz family. Time now for ATV on your side with Yvonne Colbert. And tonight, Yvonne is on the side of all those who are working tonight and tomorrow to keep the rest of us safe and happy. That's right, Nancy. A lot of people have tonight and tomorrow off, but a lot of others are there providing support that's needed over the holidays. Well, we uh, celebrated Christmas early. We uh, celebrated it yesterday. We had the turkey dinner and uh, all the trimmings, and uh, we had the gifts and the tree. Captain Chuck Brown won't see his family for the next four days. Instead, Brown and Air Nova pilot will spend the holidays transporting others to their loved ones. His family won't be far from his thoughts, though. Their picture sits snugly in his pilot's cap. We, uh, some of the guys, we carry it right around in the hat. Uh, we have Leah and Joshua and my wife, Lillian. But if it's any consolation, Captain Brown won't be alone. At the dietary department of the VG Hospital in Halifax, lots of people are on the job making sure patients are properly fed. Okay, Jeff Fair is one of them. Because you're on till 10 o'clock tonight. Uh, yeah, it's, I don't mind it. Uh, I know I have my family waiting for me when I go home, so uh, that kind of makes it all worthwhile. And then there are those who keep us safe, like RCMP Constable Karen Ehrman. She's finished work for today, but she'll be back on the job tomorrow while her husband waits at home.
How tough is it being an RCMP officer at this time of year and having to work Christmas Day? Because there are always accidents, there are domestic disputes. I mean, you probably have one of the least pleasant jobs around Christmas time. How do you deal with it? You just have to do your job. There's just no way around it, whether it be Christmas Day or uh, just any other normal working day. It is hard. And there's no way to forget the commissionaires, those people who watch over any number of places during the long holiday hours. Anthony Carano will work tomorrow from 5 to 5. What would you be doing if you weren't working tomorrow? What would you be doing special for Christmas? I'd be going to my daughter's for, for Christmas dinner at noon hour instead of having it in the evening. So they've made provisions for you and you're going to have Christmas dinner tomorrow night after yes. you finish work? Oh, yes. Yeah. Do you feel like you're missing out on anything by working tomorrow? Well, somebody's got to do it. Great. Well, of course, we're working tonight, too. Oh, who am I kidding? We are not working. This yeah, is too time. much fun. That's right. Yvonne has two little boys running around here, but uh, unlike their shy. mother, they're a little <laughs> camera shy. It's true. It's true. Thanks, Yvonne. Merry Christmas. You're always on our side, and we always appreciate it. Merry you're Christmas welcome. to you. Here's Paul. And a special Merry Christmas to all those people who are working over the holidays. Uh, Dave Pike, one of our ace camera guys sitting here with me and my gang. Uh, we're just about to take a break, but can I borrow your camera? I just want to get a shot of another one of our fine ATV cameramen. Can you take that for us? Well, there he is, I think. There's Chris Murphy on the other end. Camera to camera, from us to you, Merry Christmas. We'll be right back with the plays of the week. Don't go anywhere. The special Christmas Eve edition continues in a moment. Ooh, are we having fun or what, kids? I guess we are. Ah, uh, Christmas lights everywhere in the Maritimes. We're having a party here at the Live at Five uh, News Center, and we want to get into our Live at Five exclusive, the Atlantic Chrysler Dealers Plays of the Week now. And have you noticed all of the Santa Clauses at the sports events? I mean, Santa's at a basketball game, Santa Claus at a hockey game on a sleigh, and strapping on the old blades even while he's everywhere. How does he do it? Well, you think maybe there's more than one guy with a belly that jiggles like a bowl full of jelly? And now, some jiggle for giggles. It must be close to Christmas. Don Don, the dancing machine, a side we've never seen of the king, who I think was born again. But was he still dancing after journeyman Simon Brown upset golden Terry Norris? Who'd have thunk? Maybe only Sean O'Sullivan, huh? And other things that go bang in the night, or is that slam? Scotty Pippen, Mrs. Claus at the game, loving every second, until she saw this. Two bad boys who just might be scratched off Santa Claus's list. We hope not, but maybe they will. We'll hope for the best. Hey, Jeff Hornacek, you'll stay on the list. You must reward a boy who shares with his friends. Look at that. Nice pass, huh? Number one gift on the all-Christmas list this season. This back to the basket from half court. Watch this shot, folks. Nothing but net. All right. And speaking of deliveries, with a mailman like Carl Malone on the job, have no fear, your package will arrive on time. Here's perfectly timed arrival by Greg Johnson, the Detroit Red Wings. But the best goal of the week, well, that happened last night. Pittsburgh's Joey Mullen, who gets through the Boston Bruins, and somehow scores. Here it is again. Great, great goal by number seven of the Pittsburgh Penguins, Joey Mullen. Now we get some dramatic goaltending for you. Uh, Darren Poopa. Uh, Darren, wait a second. You took that the wrong way. I'm talking about some great saves, like Glenn Healy of the Rangers. And what do you think of this one here by Philadelphia's Tommy Soderstrom? Tommy, with a little help from his friends, the post, the crossbar, and even the back of his head, and then he gets down and smothers it. Hey, it's just about time to wrap this one up. And remember, kids, keep your skis in the snow, unless, like Sherry Malte of Alberta, you like taking chances. Just about time to turn out the lights, tuck all those little boys and girls into bed while they sleep. Santa's little elves will be unloading treats and surprises. And best wishes from all of us at the Plays of the Week. All oh, right. There's nothing better than the Christmas Eve edition of the Plays of the Week. Mm, mm, Gotta nothing like better it. better than Christmas Eve, period. You're right. And we're just about to wrap up the Christmas Eve edition of Live at Five. We'll be back in just a moment. But first, some more greetings from Maritimers keeping the peace overseas. Hi, I'm Master Corporal Arnie Daphne from 14 Wing Greenwood. I'm in Signo, Italy in support of Operation Sharp Guard. I'd like to say Merry Christmas to my wife, Bev and to the rest of my family in Greenwood, Nova Scotia. See you all in 1994. Hi, I'm Master Purple Mark Putin, 14 Wing, Greenwood, Nova Scotia. I'm here in Sicily in support of Operation Shark Guard. I'd like to say Merry Christmas to my wife, Catherine, and my two girls, and all my friends back in Greenwood. See you soon. Hi, this is Master Purple Huntley from 14 Wing, Greenwood. I'm 
here in Saganella in support of Operation Sharp Guard. I'd just like to pass on a message to my wife and kids in Greenwood. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and hope to see you soon. Hi, I'm Dave McVeigh. I'm from Greenwood, Nova Scotia. We're here in Siganilla with Operation Sharp Guard. I'd like to wish Merry Christmas to Joanna and all my friends in Greenwood. So, so who does she look like? Well, I would say the Micmac jeans won in the Celtic loss. <laughs> <laughs> Triumphant. Yeah. <laughs> she looks like Kevin. Yes. Um, yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> This may sound too good to be true, but the Christmas family of Dartmouth have a new addition this Christmas Eve. Lisa Adelaide Christmas made her way into the world during the noon hour today at the Grace Maternity Hospital. Her parents, Kevin and Wendy Christmas, who are originally from Cape Breton, were delighted to say the least. They've been married for 16 years, and Lisa is their firstborn. When I wished them a Merry Christmas, they said they only know good Christmases, and this is the best ever. <laughs> They're all good Christmases to the Christmas family. That's fantastic, Nancy. Isn't that great? They must be so thrilled. Exciting stuff. Exciting day at the Grace. Today. Well, a Merry Christmas to the Christmases. And uh, before we go to Richard and the wake-up weather, uh, we have another greeting from one of our ATV News Bureaus. Last but not least, St. John. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the black outlines. You guys can fill in color and stuff. How's that? And maybe a beach ball for the kids. And, like, and we'll have some decorations across it. A sleigh. A sleigh. Push down in the rough. That's it. Go fast or the black will mix. Just whatever you want to do there. A slash or something. Do the green. Green. a good start. Sure. Okay. Great. And you're going to do red? Quickly over. So one mix. Try to keep paint on the brush going. That's good now. Big wide stroke. Just brush right down here. Okay, now skip the ribbon. No. Can you do the uh, little green broom? Just keep getting thinner as you go to the edge. Sky's good. Sky. Merry Christmas. <laughs> good, very good. Excellent. I'd like to do this so it's a little tricky. Yeah. Just go around the object like that. So you got it? St. John. From our friend Norm Jackson. And ATV St. John. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas, everybody. And Merry right. Christmas to our terrific St. John Bureau. All the best uh, guys and uh, gal. And uh, before we do our grand finale, we're going to sing a little Christmas carol. We want to go over to Richard Zarowski. He's got the wake-up weather. And, of course, Tough job he's today. got some other important information for us. Yeah. Richard? That's right. Santa Claus is on the way. We've spotted him in the northern areas of the map. On the marine forecast this evening, a little on the windy side. Waves still to 4 meters. Look out for the freezing spray. Also, for our wake-up weather, it ain't good out there tomorrow morning. Got any traveling to do, get it done tonight. Just a couple of disturbances rolling in. We're going to looking at 10 to 15 centimeters of snow in the central and southern areas of the map. Keep your snow shovels handy. Minus 12 to minus 3 degrees as far as the temperatures go. Again, that northerly flow keeping the temperatures way down there. Now, as far as the weekend watch goes, well, Saturday, we're calling for snow. 90% probability of snow there. And for Sunday, partly cloudy conditions. And, of course, sunshine will be coming out in the afternoon. Cold temperatures once again. And that is your wake-up weather, Paul. All right. Well, and Santa Claus, he's on the way, right, Richard? Absolutely on the way. As a matter of fact, did you guys he could hear that? Anywhere he's on the way. He's okay. on the way. Good Santa Claus is right. on his way. We all ready for that big Christmas carol? Okay, just before we do that, we want to tell you what's on TV tonight at uh, 6.30, Full House. Murphy Brown is at 7. Boy Meets World at 7.30. Step by Step at 8. Nurses at 8.30. And yes, there is a Santa Claus, Virginia. That's a movie at 9 o'clock. And Rich Little's A Christmas Carol at 11. Terrific uh, Christmas Eve night uh, tonight. And just a quick special program note on Boxing Day, ATV proudly presents a maritime special, Terry Kelly's We Can Do Anything. Here's a quick preview. All right, that's going to be a great show. Boxing Day here on ATV. And now, the grand finale, the moment we've all been waiting it's for. Time, you guys. Me, 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 me. Is everybody warmed up? They were all doing up? their voice exercises. These girls right here are very good singers, Paul. A little so music from Mr. Hahn. Kurt, you all set? Mm -hmm. 
a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Or sing through the snow. Oh, Randy doesn't know the words. <laughs> you got me again. We'll see you on Monday. That's it for us. Have a great time, everybody. And now let's go to Steve Murphy with the ATV Evening News at 6. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, guys. Merry Christmas, everyone. Tonight, the mystery deepens. A new theory in a double disappearance. Why is the potential of the video my dog yesterday? The marshal is never in that truck. Closed for Christmas, closed for good. A retail landmark lost. People used to line up. Outside the store, on both sides, and the women used to go in the shop, and the men used to stay outside when I was a kid. But I think at Christmas time, uh, the church is the place to be. Now, from the number one news team in Atlantic Canada, the ATV Evening News. Happy Christmas, everyone. There are new developments tonight in the Marcia LeBlanc case. A Halifax dog master brought in by child fine. He, along with other pop stars and opera stars, performed together in a Christmas concert at the Vatican last night. Uh, in about 30 minutes from now, the Pope will say Christmas Mass and deliver his annual Christmas message. It begins at about quarter to seven Atlantic time. Many people will go to church tonight, but about 50% of those who consider themselves Christians will not. ATV's Laverne Stewart on that tonight. These have all been done. Isn't that great? We didn't do them, did we? Last-minute cleaning is being done to prepare for the Christmas services being held here at Christ Church Cathedral. Most church services across the region will be held tonight. And even though many people will be making attending church part of their Christmas, a survey of Canadians shows that 50% won't bother. We saw some very interesting figures recently in another poll that said about 80% of Canadians, in fact, claim to be Christians. Many of them don't see that church attendance is an essential part of their Christianity. I, of course, would disagree, but... I wonder if you could play a little Vidor for us. Certainly, I just happen to have it at hand. Dean Wright believes that people are looking for more than the commercialized side of Christmas, and many will come to church tonight to find it. That will really be a moving time for them and a time in which they can realize that the light of Christ has indeed come into the world. Are you going to make it a part of your no, Christmas? No, we're not going to. Do you have a reason why? Not really. Just kind of too busy right now. I guess uh, the church has taken a less important role in our daily lives. Um, perhaps that's unfortunate, but I think at Christmas time, uh, the church is the place to be. In 
Fredericton, Laverne Stewart, ATV News. <laughs> a German freighter and its 18-man crew are stuck in Halifax for Christmas. But for one of the Philippine crewmen, this Christmas is really a dream come true. ATV's Rick Grant spoke with the sailors after Christmas Eve Mass today. It is Christmas Eve aboard the German freighter St. George, tied up at Pier 9 in Halifax. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God. Anglican priest David Craig of the Missions to Seamen is celebrating Mass for the 18-member crew, made up mostly of Philippine sailors with some Europeans. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you who is born this day in the city of David, a savior. These sailors are in port only because the St. George was towed into Halifax after developing engine trouble on a voyage between Mexico and Belgium. But this unscheduled stop was a Christmas dream come true for Danilo Javier of the Philippines. This is your dream? Yes, to see white Christmas with snow, the city of Philippines, no snow. And this is my first time. To see snow? Yes. What did you think? Well, not very much. I'm happy. It would be a perfect Christmas for the 32-year-old newlywed if his wife was here, but Danilo gave the best present anyone could give his family when they live on the other side of the world. I just make a phone call. Oh, did you? Yes, already. Oh, she yes. must have been thrilled. Yes. Tomorrow, Danilo and the crew will get their own gifts from Father Craig and the missions to seamen. The St. George will have her engines repaired and be headed back to sea towards Antwerp on January 6th. The Feast of the Epiphany, or what Europeans call the Little Christmas. On the Halifax waterfront, Rick Grant, ATV News. A church in Poe, California is offering a nativity scene for people on the move. First Baptist Church has set up a drive-through version of the journey to Bethlehem. Visitors can view the eight scenes depicting the events surrounding the birth of Jesus Christ from the privacy of their cars. Church members portray the biblical characters, and the scenes include live donkeys and sheep. And as we take a look home at the drive home traffic through the ATV Live Eye tonight, the Halifax Dartmouth Bridge Commission wants to announce that Christmas is on them. Once again, motorists who use the two bridges in the metro area may cross toll free from 12.01 a.m. to 12 midnight all day tomorrow. Now the jingle hop has begun. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle bells. City sidewalks, busy sidewalks, dressed in holiday style. In the air, there's a feeling of Christmas, and in the air, there'll be some snow, apparently, as well. Here's meteorologist Richard Zorowski with the details. Richard, Merry Christmas. Uh, Merry Christmas to you, too, Steve. And it looks as though we're all going to be getting a white Christmas. We have a winter snowfall advisory for. Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, the highlands of Cape Breton, also the southern areas of New Brunswick. And you can see two disturbances on this North American map, one just to the east of the Great Lakes section, one down to south of the coast of the Carolinas, and guess where they're headed? Over the next 12 hours, they're going to decide to make the Maritimes their neck of the woods, and we're looking at 10 to 15 centimeters of snow in most areas, down to the south, not quite so much. And of course, as far as temperatures went, it was also winter-like, right across the map. Cold stuff in the eastern seaboard, one exception, way down to the south, Miami at 26 degrees. If you know anybody down there, they're not getting too much in the way of snow. Cold temperatures right across the map. Cold spot, as far as I can see, is minus 38 degrees, the daytime high in Churchill, Manitoba. Thank goodness we're not there. Cold stuff also pushing all the way down into Phoenix. Daytime high there, hovering around 12 to 16 degrees. Jetstream tells the story, pushing way down to the south. And for the most part, that allows Arctic air to push in through the central portions of North America also gets a chance to move in through the Maritime and Atlantic Canada sections as well. Tonight, our patented snuggle alert, we're looking at minus 14 to minus 18 degrees in New Brunswick. In the wee hours of the morning, this disturbance will roll in. We're looking at scattered snow flurries for the first six hours before the snow really gets down in earnest across the southern and central areas of the Maritimes. Down to the south, temperatures will become milder towards daybreak. We're looking at temperatures around minus 3 degrees along the south shore of the Bay of Fundy the south shore of Nova Scotia, all the way to Halifax, Dartmouth, and things get cold as we head out towards the east. And of course, usually with snow, things do get a little bit milder, and the wind will also die down just a little bit as well. Tomorrow, well, the flurries change to snow. 
I mentioned most of mainland Nova Scotia, particularly the east shore and northern areas, will be looking at 10 to 15 centimeters of snow, a little lesser amounts both to, to the west and to the north, because the center of this track will be moving right through the Bay of Fundy. We're looking at daytime highs between minus 2 and minus 6 or 7 degrees, and of course the coldest stuff will be up to the north. Temperatures across Canada. Very, very cold in and around Hudson Bay, and again, Churchill will be down to minus 30 again. You can see Yellowknife and Iqaluit at minus 27 degrees. Minus temperatures pretty much right across the map, with the exception of Alberta, southern areas, and British Columbia, the southwestern section. Sunday, well, we're going to get under, out from under the snow, and that means a shovel. We're looking at minus 3 degrees for the daytime high, 60% probability of precipitation Tuesday. Monday and Tuesday, I guess we'll take it chronologically, Monday and Tuesday instead of Tuesday and Monday. We're looking at sunny conditions with cloudy periods, daytime highs hovering around minus 6 degrees, a 20% probability of precipitation. So we're getting back to the flip side of winter, which is away from the snow and into the cold temperatures. For tonight, get your traveling done tonight. For tomorrow, have a great Christmas. That's it, Steve. Merry Christmas. Once again, Merry Christmas to you, and that is our news for now. I'm Steve Murphy. Thank you, good night, and Merry Christmas from the ATV News team. Uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. I'm Ron Comstock with uh, ATV and editor. Um, I'd like to uh, wish everyone a Merry Christmas, but particularly uh, a sister of mine who is, will not be with us this year. She's in Vancouver, so uh, Merry Christmas, Christine, and the rest of the family. Hi, I'm Kelly Regan. I direct the ATV Evening News, and I'd just like to say a very Merry Christmas to my new husband, Jeff, and to my daughters, Caitlin and Nicole. Hi, I'm John Campbell. I'm a uh, news editor here. I'd like to say Merry Christmas to my wife, Cass. Hi, Olivia. Hi, John. Hi to my mom and dad, and hi to my in-laws, uh, Bonnie and Raymond and Amherst. Have a Merry Christmas, everybody. Oh, by the way, Santa, can I get a couple more days off? Hi, my name is Heather. I'm the floor director at ATV. I'd like to wish Merry Christmas to my grandmother and grandfather in Anaganish. Hi, my name is Natalie Moyes. Newly Natalie Moyes. I got married this spring. I want to say Merry Christmas to all my family and friends in Cumberland County, Nova Scotia. I also want to say a very special Merry Christmas to my in-laws and thank you for the best Christmas present ever. Hi, my name is Keith Jones, and I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hi, I'm Carmela. I'm a news editor here at ATV Newsroom. I would like to wish a big Merry Christmas to all the Gillises in Cape Breton. So where is that leak, story? Hi, I'm Stuart McDougall, and I would like to wish my folks, Murdick and Bernice McDougall of Sydney Mines, a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and as well my uh, brothers and sisters and friends back there, uh, Merry Christmas. Hi, I'm Carolyn. I'm the car and operator here at ATV. I'd like to wish my sister, who is with the International Students in New Brunswick, a very Merry Christmas, as well as all the students there. And I'd like to wish my parents a very Merry Christmas, Chuck and Louise. Hi, I'm Dave Eisner, and I'm an audio reindeer here at ATV. I'd like to wish my mom and dad a Merry Christmas down in Martin's River. I'd like to say Merry Christmas to my mother and father. I love you both very much. Hi, I'm Victor Cormier, news editor at ATV ASN. I'd like to wish my parents and family in Shubenacki, Nova Scotia, a very Merry Christmas. Hi, hi. Just want to wish uh, my family, the Creelman St. John and uh, Dumpies in, uh, my in-laws, the Dumpies in Boys Town, Merry Christmas, and uh, Abby and Sean, I know you're watching, and Roxanne, and uh, I'm going to get back in the box. I'd like to say Merry Christmas to my daughter and granddaughter, uh, Tracy and Jarrett in Moncton, and all the people that are going to feed me tomorrow. 